everyone. Today I'm joined with Kerem Kizeltunç, CIO of Turkish Airlines. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Jess. So firstly, could you pick out the three most important investments to prioritize this year? I think one big initiative we have this year is uh, we are seriously considering spinning off our low-cost brand, Anadolu Jet, into a uh, fully owned subsidiary. It's mostly a brand today. So that means that we will create a second airline IT infrastructure, if you will. So that's, that's one of the big challenges going ahead. Um, apart from that, we, are quite, uh, we have a quite ambitious timeline for our NDC rollout this year. Uh, I think that will be a game changer for us going forward because uh, we fly to you know, more than 120 uh, different countries. So we have a huge sales network, if you will. And NDC will give us scale and differentiation opportunities uh, from, from a business perspective. That's, that's one of the big challenges. And we are embarking on the IATA's one order uh, work. Uh, so we'll, we'll ramp up on that uh, pretty much throughout this year. Fantastic, thank you. So how are you redesigning your tech infrastructure to support Turkish Airlines' digital transformation? Um, we did a lot of work last year, especially on disruption management, uh, especially around tax recovery. Uh, one of the things we want to do is uh, we want to complete that transformation, basically giving uh, like all the opportunity, all, all the options to our uh, customers uh, in terms of in, in like normal operation and also in, in days of disruptions. And disruptions are becoming a norm, like uh, it could be snowstorms, it could be strikes in different uh, parts of our markets, etc. And to enable that, we want to kind of revamp our digital infrastructure as well, because uh, the way current things are built, they are mostly built or designed for regular uh, day of operations. And as we do that, we also want to uh, benefit from uh, the, like the cloud native architectures. So there will be a lot of microservices work going on. Uh, we want to turn our mobile application into a super app. Uh, payments is a big thing for us, so we are going to introduce our wallet uh, this year, hopefully in Q2, which will also give a lot of uh, new options to our passengers. We have a full plate of projects going forward, but uh, I think almost anything we do is all around uh, digital transformation. We also have a lot of projects going around the operational excellence, uh, both for disruption management, but also in, in other areas like paperless cockpit and uh, paperless cargo operations, etc. And employee experience is a huge thing for us. We are building a new uh, employee experience mobile app. It's like it's not even mobile first anymore. It's mobile only. Okay. So we are going to transform all the employee experience uh, into a new mobile. This year. Okay, that's really interesting. Yeah. Are you able to elaborate elaborate a little more on the super app? I think we, um, you know, more functionalities we provide to our customers. You know, the the app is becoming like our own uh, PSS system in a way. You have all the bells and whistles in that. You know, from payments to business upgrades to offers to anything. So the the idea with super app is that. Uh, customers can uh, get our features and uh, offers much more quickly. We want to be able to ship a lot more f frequently uh, from an architectural perspective because uh, today we have one huge monolithic mobile app and it takes like two or three months every time we build a new release. So with this uh, new approach we want to build micro apps, if you will, within a shell application and that, that will speed up uh, introducing new features, uh, new promotions, new integrations a lot more quickly. Okay, great. So I guess with that would come some agility and like you Absolutely. can be a bit more reactive. Uh, 
to the market. That's that's really interesting. And so a, a huge thing that everyone's been talking about sort of across industries is chat GPT. Yeah. Could you outline some of the most exciting use cases for generative AI across the industry? I mean, the uh, one, one thing is, I think, inspiration. Inspiration is still a huge thing because especially, uh, you know, you and I have traveled over uh, here for business, but when you want to do something, like when your kids want to do a, a different kind of travel because they age and every two or three years they have a different interest, you know, where should I go? You know, and then um, it's, it's mostly a challenge to find the, you know, next best destination. I think there is a ton of opportunity there uh, from a uh, generative AI perspective, especially if we can provide like personalized services to our passengers because they need to know the habits and the transformation. Apart from that, I think what I'm most interested is in is uh, all the servicing aspects. You know, can can generative AI help us with customer interactions, especially take a load of the call center interactions with our customers, maybe integrate it with speech to text and text to speech part, because that's where things still are a little bit fragile today. You know, there's huge amount of turnaround with your call center agents. There's a lot of new rules and it's very difficult to communicate it to all the call center agent workforce. Uh, those are the areas that could be pretty interesting, I think. But it's it's been like that for the last two decades, probably. So there's a little bit of a hype here. And we'll need to see if, if apart from like uh, text processing, can we really go beyond that, work with structured data, you know, personalization, CRM systems, databases to integrate that generative AI with our channels, that's that's where things will have to be tested, I think. Yeah, I think there's been a fair bit of talk about actually integrating it and what challenges there are with um, integrating these sort of ge this generative AI and chatbots into sort of existing systems and how yeah. easy that's going to be and what, what you can build from that. So that's an interesting space to be working. Yeah, yeah, because currently it's mostly about text. So there's a lot of textual information and then Maybe generative AI works pretty well on that. You know, there are very good use cases. There are also some funny <laughs> use cases, but but it, when it comes to comes to business, you know, like B two C or B two B, there's a lot of data, and making sense of that and then trying to um, understand that might be a different level. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see that. We get to see. Um, so how are Turkish Airlines transforming their retail offering? Well, uh, I mean, as you know, in, in most travel use cases, or, uh, you know, airlines get a fraction of the uh, overall travel wallet, if you will, share of purse in a way. So we, we need to expand beyond air travel, I think, and that's what we've been trying to do over the last uh, couple of years, obviously with adding hotels and car rentals and everything. But they are not the whole main thing, maybe. You know, we, we can't, uh, we launched uh, Turkish Airlines Holidays last year, which is, uh, you know, air and uh, hotels and, and package goods. And we want to expand on that going forward this year and the next. Uh, then there's a ton of new ancillary services popping up here and there, and we need to turn our systems into a platform of selling travel, not only airline. And that that's a huge uh, challenge in terms of an organizational perspective, because our customer services is all about air travel. Our revenue management is mostly all about air travel. So we need to go beyond that. Uh, from a technology perspective, uh, we just joined the IATA's Airline Retailing Consortium. Uh, so we have committed to supporting full offers and order capability uh, by 2030. And I'm also a member of the IATA's Digital Transformation Advisory Consortium. 
and uh, we have committed as an airline to help the industry go through that transformation because not only one airline uh, can do that. There's a lot of interlining. There's a lot of you know standards that need to be redesigned to work with other industry partners. Like, can I sell a short stay rental on my platform? You know, I don't want to do one of integrations with one with Airbnb and one with Expedia and one with you know Booking.com. I want to have like standard APIs if I want to be able to sell all that uh, retailing options to my passengers. So it's a huge amount of work, but I think it is time. You know, technology is there. Uh, there's a lot of data there. Airlines are ambitious. Uh, and the industry is very ambitious, IATA, and, uh, and many strong airlines are putting a lot of, uh, you know, thought and uh, muscle power into this. So I think we'll, we'll get there this time. Yeah. Perhaps it's the right time to take on this challenge. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I mean, it's not without complexities, especially when it comes to servicing, because selling is hard, but it sometimes may be easy compared to servicing and operations and uh, especially in disruption management so it's not without challenges but uh, you know as an industry we should be able to attack that fantastic so we've talked a bit um, about like chat GBT and generative AI can you identify some of the te technology trends you think will make the biggest impact on the industry in the next few years yeah I think uh, you know payments is uh, one big area and uh, it's kind of uh, not at the center of the airline agenda maybe but it's a huge uh, convenience uh, these new fintechs are providing and uh, there are interesting integrations we are seeing being rolled out uh, and I think that will accelerate over the next few years you know buy now pay later and other payment options uh, we are also, as I said, looking to roll out our own uh, wallet and uh, we expect, you know, pretty cool things to come out of that. Uh, one, you know, for the next three years, AI has a say, but as I said, that may need even more time to mature and cover all the business cases. Connectivity is huge, you know, like uh, even low cost airlines and most you know, almost all full service carriers are looking to roll out uh, free internet or free messaging uh, these days. And I think the next uh, two to three years we will we'll see a lot of that. And also like all these uh, low orbit satellites are gonna uh, speed that up pretty much. So I think that's like a given. I think that will happen over the next two to three years. Uh, there are many other area, areas, but I think mobility is still a very hot topic. You know, yes, mobile apps have been around for a while, but there are still areas, pockets of, you know, areas within the operational uh, portfolio where we are still looking at building new mobile apps, and that's that's just that's just going to, you know, continue. Absolutely. So lots lots to look forward to in the next yeah. few years. Lots of change incoming. So finally now, what do you enjoy about coming to Aviation Fest Asia? I think this is my second time uh, in, in this one. It's a good mix of, you know, coverage. And uh, I like it, like being available in multiple geographies. So you can go and meet with different colleagues. Uh, it's a bit, uh, let's say, friendly atmosphere, I would say. It's not that huge and very formal but it's not like very boutique so you can still get to contact with you know a good chunk of people and uh, network and exchange ideas so it's the right uh, size <laughs> if you right. just right yeah fantastic well thank you for joining me today thank you thank you very much